So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a webinar by Accounting Yard. And the webinar is basically a mock interview for an accounting role. Yeah. Now, ground rules. Now, I know this is a webinar, and there'll be time for everybody to talk or communicate. But the idea is, it's advisable that everybody use, makes use of their real name on the Zoom account. And the idea is so that we can call you by your name and basically to interact and know each other from here. Everyone contributes, right? So at the end of when we are done with the interview, the idea is that people should contribute. So there's no one that I say was not allowed to contribute. Right? So you can make a choice not to contribute, but it's actually advisable you contribute because this is the first time or an opportunity where you have an opportunity of actually asking the question as you deem fit at that point in time. Yeah, from experience, this session is really very engaging. So make use of it as much as possible. Now, at all times, everybody's going to be on mute except the HR person asking question and the person being interviewed. So it's very important that we are all on mute. Yeah. If you have any questions, drop in the chat box. And the idea is that when you drop a message in the chat box, at any point in time, we can always go back to look through the questions asked in the chat box and answer them clearly. Right. If you are in a noisy place and you feel, oh, you cannot talk, make it to the chat box. We we'll always go through all the questions in the chat box. Yeah, we are all learning, so there's no there's no there's no bad question, right? No question is dim as oh this person doesn't know what he's saying or he doesn't understand what he's saying. Ask it, right? We we'll take our time to answer it, and if we feel that we cannot sufficiently answer that question while during the webinar, we can take it outside of the webinar. Yeah, so please do free to ask questions. Now, where exactly are we? Right, I know that a lot of people have joined the webinar and. The reality is that not a lot of people know accounting at this, right? So basically, we're an academic client community-based platform that focuses on training and career advancement of accountants. Now, unlike the regular platforms that you have, we provide end-to-end -end service, right? So we have a job group where we drop job vacancies where you can join. And in terms of looking for an accounting job, we provide accounting training, right? So right now, as we speak, we have the Practical Accounting Academy which is taking place. There's one that's going to continue by 3rd of June, right? Which you could actually join if you want to improve your knowledge around accounting. Yeah. If you have followers on social media, whether on LinkedIn, on IG, on YouTube, you see we push out content that will help you improve your knowledge in accounting. Meaning that regardless of, oh, you have, you need something to build to build knowledge on, following accounting yard will always give you that information you need. Yeah. So some of the content we dish out, you don't see them anywhere, right? So if you're following accounting yard, it's always a win for you, right? Now, in reality, the, our trainings are quite very affordable and not very expensive that would then break the bank to, uh, to be to pay for them, to so be available for them. Right now, like you know, this webinar is free. So we also have content that we dish out for free that we don't ask a single goal from anybody, right? By virtue of the fact that you're a member of the community or you're connected to us on any social media platform. Yeah, so that's who we are, right? Now, a key part of our focus has also moved into universities, right? So you have younger ones who are growing their careers. We also try to adapt or pick up young professionals, right, during their universities and start grooming them so that the advantages that we did not have growing up when we, we invest, they have, right? So we can lead them across the right paths, right? And they would always be, obviously, get superb in their um, accounting career. Yeah. Now, so these are a list of trainings that we are organizing. We have the accounting circular money accounts, which is currently taking, going to start in June 3rd. We have financial money going to take, start in July. We have tax practice academy going to start in September. We have audit practice academy going to start in November. And we have the accounting link for university students, which will, for now tentatively start in October. Right? These are our coming trainings and events that, in case you're interested in, you could always join. Now, I'm your moderator. My name is Oladili. For those who don't know me. I'm an accountant, right? I'm also a teacher, right? I'm one of the facilitators of the trainings we do. I'm also a YouTuber, right? So 80% of the content you see by accounting and on YouTube are actually created by me. And the idea is basically to help you improve your knowledge around accounting. Yeah, so at every point in time, if you go to, you always see content. Yes, we've not been doing recently a lot of content, but this webinar, for example, at the end of the webinar, you will see it on YouTube, right? Just give it like 24 to 48 hours and that content will be available on YouTube. I have over a decade experience in finance, accounting, and audit. 
right? Basically, I started my career with PwC where I spent roughly four and a half years. I moved on to an advertising agency. After that, I moved on to a manufacturing company. Right now, I'm currently in a agricultural company, right? So I have a wide range of experience, right? Whether in terms of finance or accounting or audits. Initially, I started my current role as a financial controller, but right now I'm head of investment and planning, right? So I'm also very good around planning and also analysis, right? Now, I'm sure you're following, if you're following through this webinar, you understand why you call me Mr. Right? Why some people also call me Prof? Who would have known me back in Icon days will call me Prof. And people that follow me on YouTube and all will call me Mr. Right? Yep. Now, who's our guest speaker? Our guest speaker is Chukwemeka Madwago. He's a human resource professional with over a decade experience, right? So just to put it mildly, Emeka was my colleague in GZI, right? He's a very sound professional and he has very good knowledge around HR, right? So the first time we held this webinar was um, in 2021 January, precisely, and he was the HR representative during that webinar. And for those who attended the webinar, they would know, they would tell you that that webinar was, was deep and grounded, right? Now, what happened during that webinar was we had someone we did a mock interview for, and we focused on like financial service then. But right now, the case study is actually a manufacturing company. Now, Emeka is a very humble person, but trust me, um, he's a big fish, right? Having him present with us is a big deal. And we don't take his presence here for granted, and we appreciate the fact that he's here to help us guide and build accountants. So now, yeah, and that's that's Emeka for us, right? So now that's, if you don't mind, you can just drop your accolades in the chat box, just appreciating him being present with us today. And that will be very helpful for everyone. Yeah. Now, at this point in time, I like to have an expectation, right? So beyond me just saying this is what we want to achieve, I want to hear from attendees what the expectation is about this webinar now how can we can i get that information you can easily either drop your expectation in the chat box and say oh this is what i'm expecting or raise your hand and i will mute you and you can actually say oh this is your expectation right and after that i will now say basically state what the objective is for us so i don't mind attending to like maybe five or ten people that don't mind sharing their experience or expectation for this webinar so right now this is an opportunity for everyone to um, drop a comment or just say, um, raise their hands and tell me the expectation as regards the webinar. Anybody? Okay. All right. So someone has said, so Chika said his own expectation for the webinar is to how to remain calm, right? And don't worry, I I can I can give you an idea around how to remain calm, <laughs> but ensure that we, we answer that question. Okay, someone said they want to know the do's and don'ts of account of interviewing for an accounting room. Okay, so confidence seems to be a very strong point. So anybody, I've not seen any hands raised in terms of want to, wanting to ask a question. How to respond to salary expectation? How to respond intelligently? Having the right body language for interviews. Okay. Okay, so I think we have our first hand raised. So I'm going to omit um, Sanusi, Quadri. Right, so Sanusi, I'm omitting you so you can just basically state your points. Sanusi, can you unmute yourself? All right, so you can. All right, so you drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Yeah. Thank you very much, on Mr. Olad. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sure, I can hear you. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Sure, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Oladele. It's a privilege to be to be uh, to have this kind of invite for the mock um, interview for an accounting role. All right, so my expectation is, um, I would like to know 
on the basic requirements of an interviewer. Because some have been to different interview, then I always uh, know that I always try to see it as a challenge to know what the even after reviewing the JD, then uh, uh, going through the company profile, then at the end of the day, you will still come along uh, aside the uh, aside the. Uh, the uh, I will uh, aside the technical question as far as the role is concerned. I still always find some re um, basic requirements the interviewer expected from you. So I think that will be my major expectation today. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Anderson. Um So if I get you right, uh, you want to know what the standard expectation is by the from the interviewer. Yeah, exactly. All right, no, that's fine. All right, so okay, how to win the heart of your interviewer? Tools to learn in order to be highly sought after as an accounting professional. Oh boy, someone has written an epistle for us. I want to know how to answer interview questions relating to the job role of billing officer, treasury, finance role, right, and how. And how to answer questions relating to salary expectation, especially when you know you're underpaid in your current role. And the current company might likely request for peace sleep. Okay. All right. So I think people have contributed well enough. And I think we have an expectation of the attendees. And come on. Okay. All right. So we have an expectation of the attendees. And based on that, we would definitely try our best to ensure we answer as many of these questions as much as possible, right? And we hope that we're able to get people's, right, like really get people's um, answering the, the expectations right, yeah? So what exactly, uh, fun, fun if I don't know how the objective of the webinar went off, but I can give you an idea of it. So first is how to first introduce yourself. Right, we'll hope to address that side. How to obviously answer questions around salary expectations, how to close an interview. So, in terms of the kind of questions you could potentially ask when closing an interview, right? Then, how to prepare for an interview, right? That's how we hope to address this. Yeah. And combining all these together would be also observing the body language of the person we're interviewing. Yep. All right. So, I think that's it in terms of the introduction and our guests. So the person we're interviewing today is by name, okay, I will him to introduce himself, right? And if you don't mind, Emeka, you can turn on your camera where you are and um, Adedeji, you can turn on the camera where you are and I'll just put, pin you, pin you, Emeka, pin the Emeka. Okay, all right, then I need to pin him also. I didn't to pin. Okay, all right. So Emeka is a HR person and Adeji Lamye is obviously our interviewee. Um, so basically, I'm going to read the about the business, right? So that everybody has an idea around the company for which um Adeji is actually interviewing for, right? So he has you have an understanding of what it entails. I'm going to stop recording so that I can record the interview session separately if you don't mind if that's it. Okay, all right. So I'm going to read about the interview, the role itself. Now, Intelligence Drink is a B2C manufacturing company we plant in Southwest, North Central, and Southeast of Nigeria. It has warehouses in 20 locations across Nigeria to aid distribution. It has over five trucks used to make distribution seamless for the business and has plans to consider an expansion of the existing fleets. After staff costs and raw material costs incurred on distribution, transportation is a major cost in the book of the business. It has three drinks flavors and in three different sizes. It has plans on having a fourth plant in the free trade zone in Lekki by the end of 2024. Key raw material required for production are imported, and FX challenges in Nigeria has impacted the business. The 2022 financial year 
The business suffered a huge exchange loss due to the valuation of the Naira in 2022 financial year. The business has plans to acquire business which produce a key raw material used in production. The business has distributors that are, that represent, that are present in over 70% coverage of the Nigerian landscape. Due to the nature of the business, of the business, the business hopes to set up sound controls around collections and incentive to drive increase in market share. The vision of the company to be number one pet drink producer in Nigeria by 2040. That's the vision and the mission. Italian is continuously improving or developing and improving the manufacturing methods to ensure the highest possible level of value, quality, and product to meet our clients' needs. Yeah, so that's basically an introduction about IntelliSense drinks. And I hope I've done justice in terms of um, introduction. Um, and then if you don't mind, it's been nice that you actually turn on your camera. And the idea is so that we can actually observe your body language and all. Yeah. All right. So we're about to start the mock interview right now. And right now, let me, I think, okay, both of you are on mute. Let me try to unmute you. Okay, I'll ask to unmute. Emeka, same with Adedigi. So you try to unmute yourself now. Hi, Emeka, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Dele. Okay, all right. Good evening, right. everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so a lot of comments. And Emeka, should I start or should you start? Uh, okay, ideally, mm -hmm. the HR person starts. Okay, all right. So I'll, I'll probably start. Okay, that's fine then. All right. So, yeah. Uh, Adedeji, good evening. Uh, and thank you for doing this. And good evening to everyone. So we'll just go right into it. Uh, just do the start like the uh, all I did said. Hey, good morning, I. Uh, good morning, Adedeji. You're welcome. Hope it wasn't okay in our office. It wasn't. I I I got to use the uh, website and I was able to use Google Maps to locate your office. Okay, you're welcome. Thank uh, you. This is uh, Ledia Drink uh, International. We're a beverage company with offices with factory in over three locations in Nigeria. Our vision is to grow into the free trade zone by the end of 2024. Uh, we are market leader in the category where we operate. And as our values, we have proximity, ownership, uh, authenticity. We take pride in what we do. And we hope that by 2040, we'll be the leading beverage company in the whole of the country. In a nutshell, that is uh, Interledia Food uh, Drink Company. My name is Chukwe Mekamadago. I work with the HR team. And I have my colleague, Ladele, who will introduce himself. Afterwards, you introduce yourself. Tell us what you've done in the past, your educational background, work experience, and why you think you're a good fit for the role. Dili? All right. Thanks, Emika. Nice to have you. So my name is Ola Dili. I'm the CFO of the business. And I've been in business for over five years. And yeah, it's nice to have you on the call today. Nice to meet you, Ola Dili. All right. Yeah, so Ola Dili, over to you. OK, um, good evening. Um, everyone, my name is Adede Jilamuye. I'm a graduate of accounting from Obafemi Aolo University, Ileife. Uh, and I'm a charter, I'm a, I'm a qualified accountant. I mean, I associate, um, member of the Institute of Char Chartered Accountant of Nigeria. Since I graduated from OAU, I've had uh, the opportunity of working with quite a number of companies. Um, uh, I recently worked with uh, Medlock Logistics, um, one of the leading in logistic markets. Or in, in logistic industry. So as a finance analyst, where I oversaw uh, month-end closure, um, total, total uh, planning and execution of uh, month-end closure in ensuring that everything that goes into our accounting, uh, into our financial statements are accurate. So uh, in, 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 in doing that, so I, I did a lot, of, um, a lot of analysis, like revenue analysis, to ensure that we have accurate uh, revenue figure, uh, uh, provide assistance to other 
unit in finance and account department to ensure that they post their transaction accurately. I, I prepared and I prepared and presented our financial statement to the CFO, um, uh, uh, which, uh, which was um, ultimately presented to the board. So before Medlock Logistics, I worked with NU Retail and Supply Limited as a treasury analyst, where I did a lot of treasury functions like um, um, preparation of our fund transfer, being signed by the CFO as directed by the CFO, preparation and presentation of daily liquidity updates to the CFO, uh, which it will eventually plan uh, which and which payment we make in a day. So preparation of um, sales figure for over 100 stations, and then the, uh, the, the budgeting, I, I, was, I was fully involved in budgeting and analysis for the company. Currently, I'm gonna join uh, a fintech company um, as a finance manager, where I'm going to be overseeing a team of five uh, as a finance manager. I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to be taking responsibility of uh, the financial uh, the finance the financial the preparation of financial statements and all that. So that's just a snapshot of my career so far uh, as an accountant. Yeah, thank you, Adidiji, for that introduction. Uh, before the hiring manager comes in, I just want to ask one question. Uh, you currently work at Medlog. In the past year, what would you say has been your greatest achievement in this? Okay. All right, can I meet yourself now? Sorry. Sorry, I did meet myself because of the environment I'm currently in. So sorry for that. So uh, at Medlog, one of my major achievements at Medlog was organizing a training for my colleague uh, in, uh, in terms of handling of FAR, fixed asset register. So when I joined uh, Medlog Logistics, I noticed there was uh, the FAR being carried by the, uh, by the company was, was not in quotes, top notch. So I did a kind of review. I, I refound it. I, I did a lot of review and, 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 and made it uh, look fine. So I had to organize training for my colleagues because what flows into FAR is not being handled alone by the GL. You, can, uh, under, uh, you understand the fact that AP, whenever they have invoice that relate to asset, they post. So I, I noted that they, need, they needed to know how their posting affects our FAR. So I organized the training for them, which covered um, standard related to FAR like IS-16, IFRS-16, IS-23 borrowing cost and all that. So that's one of my major achievements at Medlock. Thank you, Adidiji. Okay. Hi, Adidiji. So during the course of your introduction, I noticed talked about liquidity management. Can you walk me through how you prepare a cash flow forecast? to guide the business in terms of liquidity planning. All right, thank you, Aladili. So in pre, uh, as I, I always answer this question by going with um, anything budgeting, um, anything a uh, forecast is based on uh, uh, assumption. So we need to know what are, what are our outlook like? What are we looking at achieving? What are we looking at achieving in, in, the, in the period that we are going to that we are going to be covering. So that will justify how we prepare our forecast. For cash flow forecast, of course, for, for cash flow forecast, of course, we need to know the business, the operational uh, business of the organization. Like, of course, uh, we have our inflow segment and then we have our outflow segment and then we have either surplus or cash deficit. So what is contributing to our inflow? We have our revenue, we have other income, we have bank borrowings and all that. So which will be all these assumption will be provided by either management, each department, like um, revenue assurance or receivable. So we need to know all these assumptions before we, uh, we are able to prepare our cash flow and projection, cash flow planning and projection. Oh, all right, thank you, that's fine. Now, so as a business, right, we import a lot of raw materials, right? So we have huge exchange loss. Now, what do you think if I revalue my bank balance, right? Yeah, I revalue my bank balance. So I have a USD balance of 20 million and I revalue it. From a tax point of view, what's the implication of revaluation of a bank balance? 
assuming that the rate moves from, let's say, 400 to 500. Hold on. I can't hear you. Let me see. Sorry. Okay. All right. I can hear you now. Sorry. I, I missed that question. Sorry. Okay. I was saying okay, that. Okay. Can you recap? All right. So I'm saying, what's the implication of my revaluation of my bank balance, right? The tax implication of the, for example, I have $2 million, right? And I revalue, and the rate actually right. I put that two million was at four hundred naira per to a dollar, right? As the exchange rate moves to five hundred, the revaluation of that my bank balance was the tax implication for me as a business. Um, from the understanding of the question, that is going to be revaluation loss. If I got the question correctly, I assume you got the question correctly. So, what's the implication from the tax point? Okay. Uh, the implication is the fact that if you are going to, because if it is um, a revaluation loss, of course, it's going to flow into your expense, like into your expense leg, it's going to reduce your, 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 your net income, which is going to reduce your, uh, your, 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 your tax. Okay. So, but from a, point, from, a, from a tax point of view, right, it reduces it. Do you think there's any implication from a deferred tax point of view? Default tax point of view, I'm trying to get um, how it's going to affect default tax. Default tax. Because I don't think it's going to affect your default tax. All right, no problem. Now, you said you involved the month end closing, right? So if you had a team of let's say five individuals, right? How will you manage mountain closing to deliver a timely reporting? Assuming the business has a time reporting of that the manual account was delivered two weeks post month end. Okay, so um, being a leader, you have two basic uh, work or basic job. So you set direction and supervise. So in setting direction, you make clear your objective. There should be clarity of objective. What we are going to, what we are planning to achieve as a department should be well known to each member of the department. By that, each member of the department is going to take responsibility of their task. So when there is clarity of objective, the task is going to be allocated accordingly. So when that happens, everybody knows what, what is expected. Communicate the timeline and let everybody know the importance of meeting the deadline. And then the 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 um the the cost of not meeting the deadline like not filing on on time and all that and not meeting the management objective when all this is communicated when the, when all this is communicated of course everybody is going to take responsibility so there is going to be a sense of belonging sense of responsibility so by that everybody is going to at the end of the day we are going to collate everybody's uh, output and then we prepare the the uh, we will close the month end and prepare the financial statements. All right. So the next piece is how do you manage? Imagine you have a team member who is a woman and she's five months pregnant, right? She's five months pregnant and she's in your team responsible for month end closing. How do you manage her responsibility given the fact that she's five months? already pregnant okay so um being uh being pregnant with a five month uh baby is going to of course weigh down the, the the team member such team member hence as a team lead you need to come in you provide assistance where needed you communicate to her especially let her know if she needs any help in closing out our in, in closing out our own task so when, 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 when such help is required, then you step in and make, make sure that the task is closed accordingly. So it's just to provide the necessary assistance. All right, no problem. So I'm going to paint a scenario for you, right? Around, um, yeah, I'm going to paint the scenario for you. You tell me how you intend resolving this problem. Let us assume right. you have a vendor, right? That would deliver one of the raw material required for production, 
let's say for example sugar now the vendor you're meant to deliver let's say for example 1000 unit of sugar and each unit costs 200 naira yeah you have to deliver okay. 1000 units of sugar or okay. 1000 bags of sugar right and each unit costs 200 naira yeah okay. now you yeah. agree to the vendor to pay a 50 percent advance to him Meaning that sorry, you paid him. Sorry, vendor, vendor or customer? Vendor, vendor, vendor. So okay. you pay the vendor. Okay. So you, sugar is a raw material required for our production, right? Okay. So the vendor is to deliver a thousand units and each one costs 200 naira. Now, the arrangement was you pay the vendor an advance of 50%, which is 100,000 naira. Yeah? Okay. However, yeah. the account payable officer who was with the procurement team created a PO at 100,000. Right, meaning that each unit was 100 naira on the PO. Okay. Now, the vendor has fully delivered the 1,000 units. However, only 70, but only like 700 units of that 1,000 units have actually been entered in the ERP. Okay. Yeah? Now, later on, due to your review, you identified that, oh, the price on the PO was wrongly entered, right? And the delivery on the system was, was done at the wrong price. Yeah. Okay. Now, given that the 300 units had not been entered, what steps will you take to correct such an error on the ERP? Okay. Uh, as we all know, everything we do as accountants, we need to always think ahead. We think about audit, year-end audit. And audit, there is what we call audit trail. So in such scenario that you just painted, the right, the right thing to do will be to reverse all the wrongly uh, entered information into SAP, into our uh, ERP, sorry. So, and then enter the new information. So by that, you, have, you will be able to create a good and clean audit trail for each of your transaction. So it will be good to reverse the error and then post the correction. All right, Th thank you. Uh, Erika, do you have any question for you? Yes, I, I have a few to ask. Uh, I, did uh, I know accounting uh, can be a lot of work, especially during some particular period when you need to put in reports and some regulatory filings. You have a lot to do and your team also has a lot. What would you consider in uh, drawing up your priority so that you can attend to what's important? Okay, so in prioritizing our task, as an accountant, we have two groups basically to report to. We have external party and we have internal party. Part of the external party is the government in terms of taxes, which, uh, which each of these taxes has deadline that you must meet. So we have some of our some of our external parties as well that you report to, like filing of your financials and all that. And you have internal. We all know and agree that external users are more strict or are stricter than internal users. Both are, both are strict, however, we have stricter. In the sense that one attracts extra costs by not meeting the deadline, such as tax. When you don't, when you don't file your tax as and when due, so you get to pay more. So when you have such things lining up on your to-do list, then you prioritize the one that will attract more, more cost. So like filing your, uh, your VAT before 21st of the first of, before the 21st of the next month, then uh, filing your payee, filing all needs to be filed, especially to the government. So that's how you prioritize your time. You prioritize it according to their significance, according to their, uh, the, 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 the extra cost that they will attract if not done as a when deal. No, thank you. In your career journey, what or when would you say was your most embarrassing moment? What happened and how did you try to resolve this? Mm, most embarrassing, most embarrassing moment in terms of work or any moment during my uh, during my career so far. Work, your kind your career journey. Mm, work, work. Okay. The only one I can think of now is actually not work related, but it happened in the office. Okay, can I rephrase? So, uh, what would you say has been the biggest failure when it comes to when when it comes to your career? When it comes to my career, biggest yeah. failure, have I ever had anyone? 
Because I, of course, everybody has ups and downs in their career. However, I've always been trying to, to push or to put in hard work. So by, by that, I've not been able to have uh, an embarrassing moment of failure. However, I had moments of learning, like, okay, making few mistakes, like the one Oladele painted where you, when you posted incorrect um, transactions, you have to refer and repost correct things and all that. So such moments have happened uh, in my career so far, but embarrassing moments have not, have not, I don't think I've not had anyone. So, okay, that's fine. If you had the liberty to pick your onboarding, onboarding program, or should you make it through this interview, what would you want to see in the first week of your onboarding? Um, I want to see a very robust onboarding where I get to know not only my immediate members, where I get to know, where I get to meet um, major uh, or many members of the team, I mean interdepartmental. So because many companies do for only your team where you get to meet your team alone, which is actually not, uh, not too good because you get to, uh, um, along the line, you get to meet new faces. Oh, ah, where did you join and all that? So it's quite uh, embarrassing, if I would say. So, but if I, if I get to meet um, more people during my onboarding, so I'll get to know much about the uh, about the people, their department, and also if I get to know uh, more uh, many of our departments and what they do and how they contribute to the success of the business. That will always because as an accountant, so especially when I when I'm expected to kickstart my work immediately after the onboarding, so you need the knowledge of the company to 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 help your judgment of posting tra of transaction postings because as an accountant we don't just interact with figures we need to understand the business before we take judgment and decision about our postings and preparation of financial statement so i want to i want to experience a robust uh onboard where i get to meet many people in the company robust onboarding yeah, that's fine yeah if you take me through your structure currently who do you report into? Who reports into your role and, and so on and so forth? Okay, uh, currently yeah, I report yeah. the CFO and okay, I have okay. a junior accountant and senior accountant reporting to me. How many of them report to you? Five. Five. And who does the CFO report to? The, the CFO reports to the CEO. The CEO. Have you at any point uh, had the privilege to relieve the CEO, the CFO rather. Sorry, can you pick up? Have you at uh, any point had the opportunity to relieve the CFO? Let's say the CFO is on leave or it's a short stay away from work. Have you had the privilege to relieve or to take on the responsibility? No, no, I've not had that. I look forward to having that soon. So you, usually who does that? Um... Because I've not um, reported to the CFO, I've not, uh, is, uh, is the, my reporting to the CFO is still young in the sense that I've not spent up to a year. So the CFO has not had that uh, moment. So I've not experienced it. Yeah. You say you have a team that reports to you. How do you deal with difficult team members? You have somebody that is not aligned with your values and goals for your team. How would you get them aligned? How would you deal with them? Uh, as I stated earlier, the best way to get each team member or any difficult team member to align with your value, to get along with the rest of the team, is first by is firstly by communicating the objective of or what we intend to achieve with each with each our own task. By that, I believe when people know the importance of what they do, because uh, when you don't know the importance of what you do, you tend to play with it. But you when you communicate the importance of what they do, how it, how it impacts the company as a whole. Because when, as a person, I tell you how your, how your task impacts the company as a whole, you feel that sense of belonging. So I need to, you, you will communicate that sense of belonging to you. There is clarity of purpose. 
this is how your your task impacts our our achievement as a as a whole. So by that, I believe such team members should have that sense of belonging, sense of uh, you know responsibility, and be able to take responsibilities. And you've done all of this, and they are still not on board with what you want to achieve. Of course, the next thing to do is to ask if there is any way to step in to improve them. Probably many team members they may want they may not want to uh, communicate. Many team members <clears throat> may need training. Uh, you, you need to assess if such team member needs training in order to deliver. However, if that if if after all this is done and the team member is still not ready, because many times, uh, you know, we find our way, we find our way to many companies where, of course, I don't know how to say it, where we are not meant to be. So probably the sort team member is not is not really with us. Then we need to, of course, find a way to communicate that. Uh, okay, are you with us? What's going on? All in all, communication matters. You communicate. Uh, communication is in two ways. So you 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 communicate, and then you 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 uh you also receive uh the the feedback. So in his or our own feedback, we get to know if he or, if he or she is is still with us or not. So we need to assess that and uh and know. Okay, thank you, Okay, all right, all right. Um, so from your own side, um, I don't know. Do you have any questions for us? Okay, um, I have question for for you. So. From the introduction of the company, I understand the company is still in the in its growing phase. Um, and from the mission, uh, the company is aiming to become one of the leading uh, one of the leaders of the of the market in which it operates. So, if I may ask, I would like to know what and what uh, is the is what and what has been put in place in order to achieve this target, and what is the company are doing in order to achieve that. All right, thanks, Amidiji. So if you if you look at the initial conversations we raised, we talked about the expansion of our plant. Currently we have three plants. There's a new plant about to be established in the free trade zone, right? Now that one is double the initial capacity of our largest plant, meaning that we'll be to do more volume. The market share in terms of the volume within Nigeria space is roughly about 200 million cans. Right. right now we're doing 50 million of that 200 million. So imagine if a new plant does double of what our existing plant already do. It means that we'll be pushing out currently about 100 million, right? And the market leader currently owns just roughly about 30% of the market share. So if I'm able to push out 100 million, it means I'll own roughly about 50% of the market share. Right now, the North Central, due to Boko Haram issues, is currently on tax. Yeah. However, we've been able to identify key distributors that understand that value chain around that area and are beginning to partner with us. Key to that is putting an incentive structure to ensure that they are properly um, given the right incentive to be to drive sales within that region. Right? Those are critical things we've done. We've also invested in people. Right now, we've had an additional a sales director, someone who was once sitting in the position of one of our computer head of sales who drive sales for us. Funding. Um, funding. We've also raised funding, funding right to help finance working capital and also our investments in terms of cap of assets right so to ensure that we meet our volumes required. So those are the steps we've taken as a business to be able to drive our uh, being positioned as a market leader and also ensure that we are able to service the markets we play within. Great, uh, thanks for that. Um, in all you mentioned, I I didn't, or probably I missed it. You you didn't speak about um, PR advertisement. What is the company doing in pushing out the the uh, what it does to the people? Okay, so right now uh, we have a unique product, right? And right now we've tested it within Southwest. And right now, if you look at our market share within the Southwest region. We account for really about 70% of the market share. Yeah. So already we already know it's doing well. Right. So right now we're leveraging in terms of we need to see that it, the infographics or the number of uh demographics actually of in terms of consumers that is appealing to the younger generation. So we've seen that people within the age of between 20 to 40 are the major consumer of our products. 
So right now we believe that those people are heavily present in Benin social media. And also we partnered with a outdoor broadcasting company that uh -huh. has big billboards within the South, within the North Central. Yeah. Also a bit of mix of radio, right? So right now, if you notice the average Northerner listens a lot to radio at jingles. So we made to partner with a marketing agency that understands that dynamics, right? So we're going to do a lot of jingles on radio station in Hausa language, right? And that will help us be able to penetrate the North Central. Oh, that sounds great. Um, my last question, um, uh, post-COVID has taught us that, oh, people can be productive uh, anywhere in the world. So what is the, what is the intelligence um, company doing in ensuring flexibility? What is the work mode like? Um, uh, there is it hybrid, fully on site, mm -hmm. or fully remote? So right now is a blend of both. I'll say hybrid, but hybrid is applicable to more admin staff, so like finance, HR, sales, right? But if you are production tied, it's fully on site, right? You cannot produce a pet drink at home. <laughs> of <course>. So <laughs> you need to be on site for manufacturing processes but for admin and sales and rest is hybrid right so we have a timetable where we share where employees are required to come at least two times in a week to the office and they rotate within themselves right so ensure that there's always someone available in every unit within the office so there's a calendar that ensures that there's that rotation among the employees all right thank you that answers uh, the question all right uh, yeah, before, before we go, one more question from me. What's your motivation? Why are you looking to change the world right now? At the um, basically for career growth. Um, uh, when, when, I, when I looked at the um, mission and um, vision of the, uh, of the company, I mean IntelliSense, so it aligns well with my, with my career prospects because I, I know that it operates in, um, in uh, FMCG. So which this with uh, a, a lot of data, I mean bulky data. And as an accountant, the, the level uh, of your growth sometimes depends on the level of data you interact with. So when you are dealing with a small company, of course, when you are preparing financial statement with a, with, a small, um, with a small data, you may not, of course, that will not be more tasking. So, but when you deal with bulky data like, a very voluminous data, then you 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 know you are tasking your brain. You are you are you know when you prepare such, you know that you are becoming a good accountant. So, uh, working with intelligence is is going to give me that avenue to deal with a lot of data. So I believe that aligns with my uh, career prospects. Uh, do you mind sharing with us how much you currently earn? Okay. Um. Ah, uh, I, I don't, I can only give you range, of course, because I have signed NDA with my current employer, non-disclosure agreement, where, um, as we all know, salary, salary figure is, is confidential and divulging confidential information is, is legal. So I may not be able to uh, give you such uh, information. So I would just want you to, of course, I believe for this role, you will have range of what you are looking to pay. So when you bid, of course, I'll tell you if I'm, if I'm, if I'm good to go with that or not. Are you saying you're open to negotiation? Yes, I'm open actually. When it comes to salary, I'm flexible. What is your notice period of your current employer? One month. One month. Okay. Are there any other questions, comments? You would like to know? No, 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 not really. No question. Okay. Dele, is that all from you? I mean, I think that's all from you. Right. Yeah, thank you. I did it before your time. I uh, will get back to you on the outcome of this chat, hopefully in less than two weeks. Okay. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's great um, getting to know much about the company. Thanks so much. Yeah, have a great afternoon. Yeah, the end. Okay, all right. So I don't. So where should we start from? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think I should stop. 
Tesla and this company. Okay, um, so I think with this, we should get general feedback from people, right? And Thanks what they you. feel about the the interview. Let's let's get general feedback before the maker gives own perspective on oh his feedback generally around the interview. So it would be nice to get people's feedback, right? And let's hear their perspective about how the interview was for them. Yeah, anyone you can ask to be on mute and just let's just walk through it okay all right um so let's add the pin so let's have you okay chiku okay chiku hi okay chiku okay you can you unmute yourself hands are being raised yeah, yeah okay all right so i guess you raise the hand first so i'd like to hear you um the only issue i have with the interview was when he said something about undisclosed um uh, he signed the undisclosed uh this thing with uh, his company mm -hmm. and is that now is that really possible that you can't tell us uh, a a figure a particular figure that you or a range of uh, amount that you currently in you understand this can be a turn off also sometimes you will be like oh he, um, he that is too proud or something. He doesn't want to tell us in this figure. I think um, this thing has uh, we in the interview. I also should also be careful. Then we got to tell them. Can to comment on that? Okay, I'll, I'll give my perspective and and I'll say here that there's no one size fit all situation with salary uh, conversation. However, let's understand that. Interviews are a two-way street. While you as the person, potential employee, wants the job, the organization is also looking to get you. So yes, you should be polite, but you have the option of not disclosing your current salary, or you should go about it in a polite way. Would you say you signed a non-disclosure? Maybe not the way to go, but I could say, for example, oh, uh, if it's okay, I would not like to discuss the status of my current salary. I could give you a range or we could discuss how much the current role offers. If you are okay discussing it, you can as well tell them. But you are deliberate. So you can either say or not say. And if a or if an employer, a current or a potential employer is going to disqualify you because you didn't give the current salary you earn, maybe you should have a second thought about joining the organization. Because like I said, it's a two-way thing. You should be able to be comfortable saying what you think about the role not disclosing current figures and all of that. Then let's also mind culture. There are some countries, some labor laws that you must declare how much your role offers. I don't know if some of you have seen on LinkedIn, after an advert, they'll say this role uh, offers this amount. They tell you for some countries it is legal, but some other countries, they keep quiet about it. Notwithstanding, you can either tell or choose not to tell. But when you're not telling, just be polite about it. You say you're not at liberty, you can tell them you, just, you signed a non-disclosure agreement. You say, oh, you can even pause say, is it okay if we rather discuss the budget for the role I'm interviewing for? And that's fine as well. All right. Thanks, Emika. Um, all right. So I think Esther, let's see what Esther has to say. Um, Esther, can you unmute yourself so you can ask your question? Thank you very much. It's such a nice, such a nice uh, moment. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, it's a little faint, but we can, we can hear you. However, there's some, I think I, I came in in the course of the beginning of the interview. One or two or a few things I noted while he was in the interview was that his eye contact was not actually focused on the interviewer, because for me, the very, the very key area for a person being interviewed to focus on the, what's called the interviewer, there's one, because most people say they want to know if you're going to be a nice person, you want to focus and let's see if you're, if you're sincere. That's the first one. Then two, I, I noticed when he was introducing himself, he was so, he dwelled so much on his, um, the job, the JDs. For me, I look at the achievement and not so much so, I don't have to talk so much about what I've done about it, I just speak those Key key areas, those skills are gained over time while working at that fit. This is what I'm looking at. So I'll pick those key key those key, key skills 
that suit this key area, I'm going to look at on the job while I'm talking about what I've done and those areas my 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 my, my skills can fit into the role. So the focus on achievement over time while I grow over time in my career. Then for the area of um the cash flow, you talk about the question about cash flow, what would you see in major more on the inflows? Now the, the only mentioned the uh, projection for inflows. How about the art flows? What about those projections? and all that. So those are the areas I think I looked at. Uh, though I didn't stay to the end, but I think I noticed that area. They told me aspect of um yes, <laughs> Anyway, it's good. It looks like you're paying attention. That is nice to see that we have a lot. But continue, don't mind. Just just being plain and light and not. Let's continue. Start. Oh, he did so well. I think I like his confidence. Um, he did put in because he's very confident, even though. Uh, you know, that's something you should, as a as as a as a person that's been inside, you should be able to be confident while being you no know, question that doesn't show them that you're scared of or you don't know what you're doing, but in all be confident. And that's just the big thing. That's one of the most thing where you, uh, sorry, the evaluation, there's always uh, something that the tax will come about, deeper taxes. For you, if there's a surplus, you're gonna be charged. Any, any valuation surplus for any asset, you have to charge tax on that because it's a surplus. So for me, there's a tax aspect of it. Then for the what's it called? The I think I got I got you know you said you know reverse from entry on PU and all that. For me, there should be an exceptional approval. Should, all parties should be aware of what mistakes has been done. You don't just go and reverse without it calling onto your your, your the person reports to or the uh, the senior in, in above you and say see what's happening then get get approval for anything you're doing before you want to reverse anything else. But even the reverse I don't think it needs to be done because you need to seek a, 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 a section approval to increase the level of what from what it was to what other people say so you want to move from that process. Thank you. All right, thank you, Esther. Um you said a lot and I hope I'll be able to yeah. see it respond to some of them. So you mentioned about eye contact. Um, that's very true. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the fact that this is a mock scenario, but I think eye contact is very important, right? And I think you should have focused on the screen a lot more. Yeah? Um, you talk about cash flow. So cash flow is a technical question, but if I was going to answer that question, like you said, break it down, right? So for example, what makes up your inflow, what makes up your outflow? Now, I don't know this business, but I would assume, okay, for example, how do I plan key things that typically every business will have? So procurement of raw material required for production, staff salary, loan repayment, if that exists, um, statutory related payments. Those are classic examples of outflows. It may not apply to every business, but if, when you explain that during the course of explaining a cash flow projection, for example, the plan liquidity, the person knows what you're doing, right? Collection from customers, right? So basically, most times, most business will have a receivable, except the business is a cash business, right? So, for example, drop the current schedule of your outstanding receivable and what your potential cash sales or your sales will be and the potential collection that could come from those sales, right? That should form flow into your inflows. And being able to properly project and review that would help you probably plan your cash outflow, right? I think that could be a more detailed way to answer the question than just high level, just explaining from a very theoretical point. Yeah. Um, in terms of tax, yes, first, the evaluation of um, bank balance does not result in, doesn't have an impact in terms of income tax, CIT and ET, because it's a disallowable expense. So what would happen is that instead of it reducing your CIT, right, it will increase, sorry, first, the revaluation is a gain, right? So basically, if you disallow it, it will reduce your income tax liability, right? Because obviously you pay less. However, it has a default tax implication because the reality, if you revalue your cash balance today, right? You're meant to recognize a default tax liability from that gain that you've disallowed this year, right? So it's a technical one, but that's that's actually the correct response for that question. Yeah? Um, which, which other thing do you mention, Esther? I think she talked about discussing achievements instead of yeah okay yeah true so so this is my perspective about um, introduction keep it brief right don't make it don't don't talk too much focus on achievements focus on um responsibility tied to the new role you're going to occupy 
and that could help you a lot, right? So make it very brief. Don't be too detailed because the reality is that your first question, we all know that question, they can't run away from me. You can't have an interview and not introduce yourself. So that question, you should be 100% prepared for it, right? That you can, if you close your eye, you can answer that question and sell yourself. It's the first point to sell yourself. So the ability to sell yourself at that point is very critical, yeah? So when I'm faced with such a situation, I would always ensure that I sell myself to the maximum place possible within a very brief period, right? So for example, summarize my year of experience, summarize my key achievements that you could apply to that role and key skill sets that are tied to that role. Bam, very brief and simple. Now, it's also about the PO question. So the PO question was a tricky question. Now, approval is very important, like Esther rightly mentioned, and it's critical that you, obviously, when you identify the issue, raise it with your superiors and say, this is the problem, right? But when you raise it with them, you also, also want to provide a solution. Now, typically for such transaction, if the item in question has not been issued out of inventory, then you can actually do a return, right? Whereby it will, you re, like it's like a reversal, basically saying that that item was not received. Then recreate the PO again with the right pricing and receive the item afresh. Yeah, so that, that's the ideal thing to do, right? With appropriate approval, like Esther rightly mentioned, and that's the way to resolve that issue. Yeah. Um, is there another question Esther asked that I have not answered or, or any feedback that Esther mentioned I've not touched? Anyone? Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm done with that one. So we have Temi Dios. So let's let's see, let's hear Temi Dios. Um, yeah. Didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think you have to. Let me say a bit about the introduction part. Okay. All right. Hello, Dele. Can you hear me? Yeah, so sure. Dele. Sure, Mika. Okay. Dele, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah I, I said you were spot on with the introduction piece, but ju just to add this, just to add this, the introduction is to sell yourself, like Dele, Dele said. So, speak more to your. And from the CV, things that so, can anybody hear me? Can you make sure that it's so, so, his own network? If, for example, you, you went to a grade school, it's okay to mention it that I think I did it with you that you graduated with the first. Okay, okay they can't can respond can... because they're on mute. Please confirm. You can hear me. I think your network is or not hear me. Okay, is it okay now? Is it fine now? Yes, better. Oh, I get feedback on my network is bad. This confirm is okay now. Um, talk if you talk for like, like so bad. okay, then let's go ahead. Go ahead, okay. All right, no problem. Y'all take note around the introduction, it's something you can always come back to okay. talk about it, yeah. Okay, all right. So, tell me that, um, if you don't mind, you can hi, Tim Dyer. Tim, you can unmute yourself, right? Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Tim. Thank you very much. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I can. Sure, I can. Yeah. Um, concerning the concerning the salary expectation, um, there is an organization like that that I, I tried to. I've not even done interview. Mm -hmm. They were asking for my. Uh, salary letter and my three months uh, salary sleep. So I told them, like uh, Adedeji said, that I can disclose this kind of thing. But they were insisting on that, that if I don't submit uh, my salary letter and uh, three months salary sleep, I won't proceed with the interview. 
And uh, I asked a colleague that is working there, he said, that's how they do. It's a multinational firm. And I was so skeptical about joining that firm. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know if it is right, according to labor, probably maybe labor law or something, if it is right. So secondly, um, concerning why did you want to leave your organization? Is it right to, to be sincere about it? Because... Uh, there is an interview like that that I, I did a great time, you understand? So I try to be very sincere with the answer. Like, for example, presently I'm working as a contract in the lead, and uh, I would like to give you the course that it's a contract where I would like to join as a full time staff. I, so I would like to know probably answering that kind of question to be sincere or not. Uh, answering that for a career progression. I just want to see if it is right. Thank All right. you. All right, no problem. Um, so, depending when Emeka is able to come back, I hope he's able to note some of these things and give an HR perspective towards it. So, pay sleep, right? So, now everything is quite dicey. So, generally, for a company already asking you to price pay sleep and don't know interview, it's not a good sign. Right, it's, it's it's showing that I don't think it's best practice. If someone asks me for my pay slip after I pass through the entire interview process and they want to finally give me an offer, I can understand, right? But if not interview me, I react on pay slip. I don't think it's a good way to go about it. It's not a good sign, right? So at that point, I'll mostly be very careful. But sometimes, you know, right now it's easy to say it's when I'm in a very comfortable position where I am earning very well or I don't really need a job. I'm not desperate for a job, right? So at that point, but sometimes people are desperate, right? They want to leave their current role, but the truth right now is that you don't want to go from fry pan to fire. Do you understand? So you want to be careful. So at that point, you would need to just know what works best for you. From a general point of view, I'll say, ah, I don't think I want to proceed with such a company, right? It's already giving me a wrong signal about the kind of culture that exists in such a business, right? So from, a, from my own standpoint, personal standpoint, I will most likely just say, mm, I don't think I want to proceed with this business, right? It's too early to ask, and I don't think that's the right point. Um, in terms of asking why you want to leave, there's no bad thing in being sincere, but in you being sincere, ensure that whatever you're saying does not act as a, a, a negative for you in getting that job. So, for example, most times we have different reasons why I want to leave a job. I'd rather focus on the positives, right? So, I'll not tell, oh, I'm telling a new employer that, oh, I'm being underpaid. That's why I want to go to a new role. No, obviously, that may be a negative. I'd rather focus on things that the person would most likely find interesting to know, right? So, for example, currently I'm looking at the progressing my career and I'm looking for a role that will take me to the next level where I'm taking off. I just completed my ICANN exams or finished my ICANN exams. I'm a chartered accountant. I want to move to the next step, right? So you focus on things that are more interesting. Or you say, oh, I'm interested in this line of business. You always want to work in this sector. And you feel that they're a market leader or maybe they're a key player. And being with them will give you the opportunity that would give you the kind of exposure you want. So focus on the key things, not something that could be negative for you, right? So that is a selling point. Just look at it as another opportunity to sell yourself. Yeah. And, and don't focus on things that would make count negative for you on the long run. Tim, I hope I answered your question. All right. So I'm going to add Mary. There's a lot of questions. So I'm going to see this chat box has a lot of questions. Hi, Mary. Can you unmute yourself? Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Mary. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. So my question would be that, okay, for example, when it comes to the introduction, yes, I usually have an issue when it comes to introducing myself because, like you said, start out with your achievements and your skill set and tie that to the job that you've applied for or you are interviewing for. But in a situation whereby I barely have any experience so basically the first job i've had is me actually assisting like basically like a junior accountant so everything i've been doing is basically to assist the senior accountants probably um in just basic reconciliation 
um, very little day-to-day -day things you do in the the office. So in that situation, how are you able to tie achieve? Because you barely have achievements at that stage to say, okay, these are the achievements. How do you, how are you able to sell yourself when it comes to answering the um introduction in the introduction question yes tell me about yourself question then two would also be in a situation whereby you tell most um companies when they ask you um what's your salary expectation for this role and you tell them that you're open to negotiation and whatever some of them still insist that they need um an amount or a range so how do you properly answer this question or not have to keep going back and forth with them? Because I've had a situation whereby I told them this and they're like, no, that they actually need a range, that they want a range from me. So in that situation, where you say a range, you understand, you might find yourself lowballing yourself at the end of the day. So how do you avoid that kind of situation? And three, <laughs> my third question would definitely be, how do you, okay, like someone was saying eye contact. I'm the kind of person that I'm very shy. So making eye contact with the interviewers would make me probably stammer or stutter. And that would actually make me lose confidence in what I am saying. So I, I think I find it easier removing as in losing eye contact with them. And I'm actually hearing now that it's actually needed. So how do you how do you move past that part where you don't lose your confidence, whereas also maintaining eye contact with your interviewers? Those are my questions. Okay. Thank uh, you. No problem. Thanks, Mary. Um, so I think the first question about introduction. So it's okay yeah. not to have an achievement, right? In the early career stage of your career, you may not necessarily have a, an achievement. But trust me, sometimes we have achievement and we don't know we have achievement. So imagine if I'm fresh out of school and I'm already chattered. For me, as some may not see it, but it's an achievement. I'm just, I'm, I'm done. My mates are not chattered by now. So if I'm chattered, for example, for me, it's an achievement. If I'm only in final stage of my can exam, <laughs> I can consider it an achievement at that point in time because it's a very early stage of my career. There's a point I don't have that. Do you understand? So sometimes when I'm answering a question on an achievement, I ask myself, if I leave this business today, what would they remember me for? The senior accountant you are working for, what do you remember you for? There are sometimes your senior. So sometimes people will tell you that as you work, sometimes when you notice things you've achieved, just take note of them because sometimes people don't know. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. let's say, for example, imagine before you joined, right? They say tax actually takes like two weeks to do, and basically you're doing it within one week. It's an achievement. In short, mm -hmm. if, for example, you don't have a direct achievement, if you're supporting a senior accountant and there are things that he could say he achieved, and you supported him in achieving that stuff, you can actually, if you know how to do it, you can actually claim to be part of that achievement. Directly, you would not do it yourself alone, but maybe with support from your senior accountant, you have to complete that tax. It's an achievement. General. So sometimes in answering that question, it's a question of you need to thoroughly think about it, right? And most times, liaising with your senior colleague. If possible, ask your senior kind of, okay, that's, I've been working with you for one year for now. What do you think you like about how I work with you? And from there, you can actually better identify some of those achievements. Do you understand? Okay. So two things. One, you can either, on a day-to-day -day basis, notice things that they've actually told you you've done well. Note them. They could be achievements. Two, consider projects you work hand-in-hand -hand with your senior accountant. Be potentially, you could be to say, oh, you're involved in. It could also be an achievement, right? Small wins. I finished my ICANN exams. Could be an achievement. Oh, I've completed three courses around financial modeling, Excel. It could be an achievement because your mate has not done that, right? So it could also be an achievement, right? But if you don't, even all, you don't see have an achievement, then just focus on quick wins. Summarize your career and what you're doing. It's not mandatory that you must have an achievement. It's but as you approach or you get to like maybe your fifth year or your fourth year in your career, people expect that, oh, you've worked for four years, you should actually have an achievement. Then it's important at those points in time that you should actually have an achievement. Okay, but in your early career, people may not, like your first two years of your career, nobody will really focus on achievement at that point in time. Most times people are focused on, are you a good learner? Are you, um, are you reliable? Are you trustworthy? Right? Are you a fast learner? Are you interested in growing? 
Right, these are the kind of things that comes to mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, around the shyness. So, how you handle shyness in terms of when interviewing? One. Only one minute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, sure. I can hear you, Mika. Yeah, yeah. I, I turned off my video to help the bandwidth. And yeah, I, sure. I think it's the network issue. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say something about the introduction with Adi Deji, and then he came up with the Mary question. Okay. Good answer, Adele. In addition to what Adele has said, uh, when you are fresh from school, there are many things you can scream at or shout at as your achievement. I was saying, if you went to a great school, call it out. So, because it's not everybody that has the opportunity of even getting to some highly school, whether locally or internationally. If you had a foreign education, call it out. If you were top of your class, you may not be the top head, you may not be the top most rather, but if you were like top 5%, top 10%, there are ways you can call your achievements. If you volunteered while you're in school, some people were members of some association, some people were members of some uh, faith-based organization. If you were as, as much as a treasurer in your departmental association, you can say you kept your books and drove efficiency, you can call it out. And then if you are, like Mary said, reporting to the senior accountant and she's not doing anything directly, some of his achievements can be yours. So you can phrase things like, I worked in a team that drove efficiency by turning in our report every last uh, week in the month. I, I, I was part of a team that did this. I, I was involved in this, but be able to defend it. So the next question some people will ask is, what was your particular role? in that team. So you cannot call out what you have done. So you prepare the input data for the chief accountant or senior accountant who did this and that. But look out for what you have achieved as a team. You're part of a team. You can call that your achievement. If you were top of your class, you can call that achievement. If you went to an Ivy League school, you can call that an achievement. If you have done some professional qualification, call that an achievement and so on and so forth. Even if you are currently helping your mom, in quotes, run her business and you are keeping her books, you tell them that uh, for this business, there was no financial data or record. You started out from scratch and you're able to keep the influence. See, just look out for what you're doing and phrase it. And if you check, if we all check, we have some things we are doing well or some things we have achieved. We just consider them too small to call out. And that's the, the part that we need to work on during our uh, introduction, during an interview. All right. All right. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, Dele, can go ahead. All right, no problem. Um, so in terms of shyness, right? So basically, when one way I handle shyness is most times, so I learned this when I want interview for a role. The first that introductory question is a question that we all know will be asked during an interview, and we have a, a basic idea of how the question will be structured. So, first is I do a video recording of myself answering that question, and I do it multiple times. Right, until I'm able to create a version that if I sell to someone, it's fantastic. Right, so basically, I can read the script, but I've now got to I perfected the act of saying it. So, by the time you do it, I can trust you, you can do like 20 recordings of that, but even you yourself, you know, you have improved. Yeah, now the next part is also that you can also use a mirror, right? Talk to yourself in the mirror and say the same thing, try to put that introductory speech. Because if you have to gain confidence in the early stage, there's a high probability that you remain confident throughout the course of the interview. Then secondly, during the course of the interview, you can choose. So, you know, you can be looking at the interviewer and not looking at the interviewer, right? So you don't need to look into his eyes. You don't need to just show that you are looking around that focus of where his eyes or his face is and choose a spot. Do you understand? Okay. So that way, you are not looking at his eyes and he's intimidating you. We are looking at, so for example, you know that, I'm on the Zoom call right now. I am looking at my screen, right? Meaning that there's some level of that, oh, that the guy can see. I'm not seeing him. I'm looking at my screen, right? But right now, it's not like I was lo I'm looking away from my screen. That doesn't look like I'm paying attention to what's happening here. So that way, the person still feels like, oh, this guy is looking at me. Jonathan, that's, for example, a Zoom call. But if it was physical, I'll choose a spot around him to look at or choose someone to look at, yeah? And that could help you. So I didn't know if you have any comment around Thank you. confidence during the interview. <laughs> Mary, the truth of the deal is you have to build confidence. Yes, we all have different personalities, but for many organizations or many uh, hiring managers, they look out for confidence. And if you would grow in your career, confidence is something you have to build. 
Yes, it may not be there initially, but there are things you can do to build confidence. Take deep breaths, for example, if you need to. I, I, I can be a shy person, but if I need to address a room or talk to somebody that is up there, I prep myself. I take deep breaths. Sometimes I prepare beforehand what I will say. I try to drive the conversation so I am in control. Yeah, sometimes the conversation may not go in your direction. There's nothing wrong in saying, oh, you don't have the answer to that. You'll come back. But it's something you have to build. Then the eye contact, you can, you can have a full confidence. So when I say full, false confidence now. So like Daily said, you are not looking directly at the person. If you have a few people on the panel, good for you. You could do the sweeping method. So you're not focusing on one person. You look at one person, you move to the next person, you move to the person. And then you have some body language, some gesticulation. It helps you build your confidence. What I've also learned, there are some body posture that sends signals to your brain to be confident. If you could look at body language for leaders, a LinkedIn course, it will help. So there are, there are ways you sit and it just subconsciously builds your confidence as well. There are some ways you cower. It will also dampen your confidence. So try to get those posture. Try to sweep across the room if you have a couple of people on the interview panel. If you have one, uh, one person, you can look at the region of the face, but the confidence has to be there or you have to let them think that you have the confidence. There are no two ways about the confidence thing. So work in that direction to, to, to give them the the perception that you're confident enough to get the role and to work in the organization. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Um, all right, thanks, Emeka. I think that was quite impactful, right? Your contribution was well, was smooth. All right, Teosi. Hi, Teosi. Uh, before you move to the she also asked about this, I think, salary expectation question. Oh, okay, sorry. I missed that. Okay, all right, Emeka. I'll let you then, I'll contribute, yeah. See, 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 culture of the organization you are going to work for is very important. And the, the sad thing in this part of the world is that we have uh, excess supply of labor. So we think we are the receiving end for job interviews. For many countries where you have load, uh, where, where the demand for labor is higher than the supply, you will see that uh, interviewers or employers are usually lax in their things. See, if an employer asks you for pay sleep, at the beginning of your interview and, you're not, and you don't want to share, you let them know you are not at liberty to share. However, they can ask your salary expectations at the beginning and I've been in such interviews. And why they do this? I said, I don't waste, you don't waste my time, I don't waste your time. For those people, their role already has a budget and they want to see if you fit into that budget. So take, for example, this accounting assistant, financial manager role we're recruiting for. The budget for the role is 18 million naira to maybe 20 million naira gross. So at the beginning, before I even move you to an interview we've looked at your cv is good so before i move you to in, for an interview to the hiring manager i want to say that we can even afford you before you go far you have done two levels three levels interview and then we'll come back and say no then we'll start over so i could ask you what is your what are you currently earning and then what how much you want to earn but if you are if you don't want to tell how much you're earning that's fine again another thing i've said again another thing that's happened in my past experience that some employers ask they want to know really in that instance, I, I tell them, is it okay to give you a ring? But if they still insist, I just know that there's something wrong with that culture. But most often, they will accept a range as long as it's a figure. Sometimes they will reluctantly accept that. And what I do is I give a range. And trust me, my salary is in the lower range. So I say, oh, I am between 15 million and 25 million naira annual gross. Be sure that my salary is like that 15 million part. But in their head, they actually, they usually will take an average. Then you move to the second question, how much are you looking at? That part, you mentioned how much you really want, but it's also good to be open to negotiation. There are many things that make a ca great career and it's not only money. Money is one of the small parts. And trust me, when you get into a good organization and they see your value, eventually the money will come. Eventually the money will come. And again, advice, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong to take a salary or pay cut to get into the organization that you think will project your career or prepare you to higher levels. Some organizations are great on your resume and they could be a springboard for you to earn much more. So if I'm in an organization that maybe I'm already earning 20 million, for example, annual growth, and the budget for this organization is between 15 to 20 million, let's say they'll pay me 18 million and you've checked your monthly expenses. You, you, you need to check that if, you, if you're married and have kids and you check your budget. And you can accommodate that. And you think this organization and this career will propel you be a springboard, some people, uh, springboard rather. 
you can take that pay cut to take that career so that you can have that experience. Yeah, some people have said working in, in the big four is is good is a springboard for a springboard, but I want to say springboard. Springboard for other career growth. And you really want to work in a big four company. There's nothing wrong to take a, a pay cut to get into such organizations, for example. You want to work in a global uh, organization. You, you could consider that. So yes, you are not forced or you cannot be forced if you don't want to release your salary details currently. If they allow you, give them a range. Yes, organizations can ask at the first stage. They do this right now just to know if you fit into their budget before they even go through the stress of wasting your time and wasting their time. So it's, it's, it's okay. I don't have, I hope that helps answer uh, the question. Um, please, can I, add, can I ask a question? Hmm? So <laughs> my, question, my question is that um, in that situation where you actually quote a range when you're asked to salary expectation, what if you quote a range that actually is lower than what they actually budgeted for that particular person? Isn't that you lowballing yourself? So like I said, my current salary and my salary expectations are two different things. Okay. I could be earning 10 naira now and I'll tell you I want to earn a million naira because some people are actually underpaid where they are. Okay. Yeah. So if they insist and you give them a range and it's lower than their salary, just know what you want for yourself and try to drive the conversation as much as possible. Like I said, it's a two-way street interviewing. You're looking at this organization. I want to check if they're a good fit for you. So don't, don't, let's not be in the des, des, desperate seat so that we just take everything the organization tells us or anything the interviewer is saying. It's, it's two things. They will need to fill that role. That's a given. So they need somebody to get into that role. Just do your introduction, sell your achievements, sell yourself in such a way that they don't have an option than to go with you. I've seen organizations that have had to go and review their budgets. They have a fixed budget for the role, let's say 20 million. And then they see a fantastic candidate they go back to HR or to the board or anybody to say, ah, we need to get this person into our organization. And they move that 20 million to probably 25 million just to get that candidate. So I think we should be concerned with setting ourselves so well that this organization does not have a choice that wants than taking us. And then at that point, the negotiation is smoother and is easier. It's when they are not uh, too sure that you are the best fit and then they go back up. But if they are sure about you, trust me, you are at an advantage when it comes to negotiating and bargaining. Mm -hmm. uh, if I will add to that, Emeka, right. Um, so I know that, like you said, it's a two-way street, right? Now, sometimes you may not get the salary rights, and trust me, those things happen. But now, in when you're handling salary issues, it's good to always have your own expectation in terms of, see, regardless of whatever they end up telling me or I find out when I get to the organization, for me, what is my safe salary expectation that if, for example, they give me that amount, right, and it's lower than their budget, though, but I know that with this, no matter what I see when I get there, I am fine for myself. You need to have that internal conviction, right, that says that, okay, currently I'm earning 200000 However, if I get a three hundred and fifty, or let's say 300000 for example, I am fine for the next two years. I'm not going to disturb myself. It's possible that you find the company that their budgets are telling you, for the sake of argument, 350 or even 400. And you think that when you now get to the role, you now find that, oh, the person that occupying that role before you, that's what the person is earning. But because of you decided within yourself that if I collect 300,000, I am fine. It doesn't impact how you respond because sometimes it could affect people's morale or psychology when they get there, they find out that, oh, the role was actually of a higher budget. So you need to prepare yourself psychologically. Some companies are good enough that they'll say, oh, you've actually low-board yourself. However, company has a budget. And they'll say, oh, this role, low, the person, this is the amount they'll pay you. There are companies like that. That you say, oh, you've agreed 300000 That's what you told them that you're sorry, expression. And you just see when they give you an offer, they're giving you three fifty or 400 k There are some very good companies like that that will give you exactly what that role is actually worth. And do not say, oh, because you're underpaid, they don't pay you well. So, but like I said, it could go that way. But for me, the best thing is psychologically prepare yourself that, oh, this is what I will take. And if they, if they don't give me this, I know that I'm not taking the offer. If they give me, I'm fine enough for the next two years while I'm working with them. Whatever I regret, whatever I see. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you very much, Dili and Chukemeka. All right, welcome. Hi. Okay, Toyosi. Hi, Toyosi. 
Hi, Hello, Yossi. Hello, okay, Yossi. Maybe Yossi can not hear us. Let me call. Let me, I think, okay, Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. Hello, Gabriel. Gabriel, can you unmute yourself? Hello, Gabriel. Yes, maybe. So let me add Olari. Olajuwon. So Olajuwon, can you can you unmute yourself? Yeah. All right, you can talk now. Hi, Dad. Yeah, sure. We can hear you now. Uh, hello. Can I go ahead? No, right now. Olajuwon can speak. So let me first appreciate you for this uh, wonderful session. Hello, should I come after this guy? Um, this. Um... Don't worry, I'll, I'll call your attention to you, don't worry. So, just as I was saying, let me first appreciate you for this wonderful session because the truth is, when most of us started, we didn't have this kind of opportunity. Just like when we we're talking about the achievement, there was a company I joined in 2015. And during the interview, I was asked what has been my achievement so far. And I saw my head, stuff and stuff, stuff and stuff. I couldn't find anything to say. At the end of the day, I mentioned just one achievement. But where am I going? So, because I, I did well with technical questions and the rest, I was given an offer and I joined them. So, why just in with my finance manager? So, we're talking about ICANN. I now said, ah, when I started ICANN, that my school was not accredited and I had to start from the uh, foundation uh, level. And lo and behold, I passed all the papers in foundation level at one sitting. Even the almighty business communication and research methodology, BCRM, I scored the highest mark in it. And it was like, are you for me? But I asked you during the interview, what were your achievements so far? You didn't say anything. And I was like, was that an achievement? And he said, you must be joking. How will you pass foundation at one sitting? And I was asking you your achievements, and, and you, were, you were finding it difficult to tell me your achievements. So fast forward again, we were talking about school activities, and I told him I was the treasurer of my accounting uh, student association, uh, and uh, I did it for two years, and all the accounts were intact and the rest. And it was like, this guy, you started the game. And I was like, what, what have I done? He said, I can't believe that you have so you have big, big achievements and you are not seeing them as achievements. So he now told me that first rule, the key is focus on your small wins. Don't focus on big wins, focus on your small wins. All those small wins you are seeing, that's where it starts from. And that's the reason why I believe that everyone has an achievement. It's just because we are looking at the big things. We forget our small wins. And at the end of the day, we get to interview and they ask us about our achievement. And we don't have anything, have anything to say. So I learned that from there. So that for your achievement, you have to focus on your small wins. Fast forward again, we did audit. He would tell me, go and prepare this schedule. Go and bring this document. Auditors need this. Auditors need that. So at the end of the day, the account was signed. And he just came to me. He shake me, congratulations. Our account has been signed. And I was like, why are you congratulating me, sir? He said, ah. Were you not the one preparing schedules? Were you not the one I was saying, go and look for this document, go and look for this, go and look for that? Do you think I, I can do this thing without, without, without you? I can't. It's an achievement for you. You assisted me in closing this audit. I was just like, shy. This man did not say this thing. I didn't know I have an achievement already. 
supporting this uh, audit. So, so since then I realized that every of my small wins is an achievement. So, on the confidence level, someone thought about confidence. The truth is, don't wait for when you want to move. So, for me, even when I'm not interested in moving, I still apply for roles. So, it gives me two advantages. It opens me to the current questions being asked in interviews. Number two is the fact that as I continue to attend interviews, my confidence continues to grow. So I don't wait till when I want to move before I go for interviews. It builds my confidence. That was, that was how I, I was able to deal with that. And I, and, I, and I want to believe somebody has caught that now. Don't wait till when you want to move. Always be ready to go for interviews. It makes you to know current questions. It also builds your confidence from there. So uh, that's, that, that's what I've, I, I've been able to learn in terms of uh, confidence. Then for salary expectations, yeah, I love what a maker said. Be ready to sell yourself. Be ready to sell yourself. Hello? I hope I'm audible. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so be ready to sell yourself. So I do two things. I do two things. Number one, I'm always ready to sell myself. Number two, I have my personal cash flow, which is where accountant looks it. We, we, we keep books for companies, for we don't keep our own books. So I have my cash flow. Like Daily said, contentment is key. If you are contented, if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are someone that has contentment, you should be able to know your words. So when I'm going for interview, I try to sell myself. And the second thing is, I know how much I want to collect. It's not a matter of your body myself. And the key is, can this pay last me for the next two years? It's not a matter of, uh, I'm not saying this to, to, to pride or anything. I was, still I, I was still telling a colleague on Friday, I don't know how to, how, how to fill an appraisal form because it's been long I filled it. So there's, there will always be one of our or, or that. And even, even when I eventually fill it, I really don't disturb myself whatever the line manager gives me because before I enter, I negotiate an amount that for the next two years, I don't disturb myself. I don't disturb myself. So regardless of what the company wants to offer, I don't hesitate to tell you how much is your expectation. I tell you straight. The only thing I just add is it's negotiable because I would have added some hundreds on it. So that by the time you start that negotiation, it still comes down to what what what, what I'm expect, what I'm expecting. So it's two things. Be ready to sell yourself and also know your worth. Know your worth. Know the value you can give that can last you for the next three years, regardless of what you meet in that organization. And just like Emeka said, it has happened to me as well. The figure I mentioned uh, was actually beyond their budget, but based on my performance, it was after I, I joined that I knew anyway, but they had to, they, 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 because they, want, they wanted me, they had to adjust their budget. Even for me, I thought I didn't do well, or I thought they didn't like my response because it took time before they came back, not knowing that 
they were trying to find the adjustment they did to that level in order to be able to give me that offer. So I didn't even know that they were actually fighting for me in their, at their own end. May I thought probably they have moved on. So when I now got the offer and I, when I joined, I was not like, hey, Sharda, I even thought you guys have moved on. He said, no, ah, the amount you said, it was beyond our budget. So we had to go back to MD, the ESCO had to sit and the rest, this, that, that was all took, that was all took time. I said, oh, okay, I, I, I didn't know. So I don't, there, there is nothing like a secret to me as far as once you ask me, how, what's the, what are your expectations? I give it to you straight. Meet it, and if you, are, if you want to negotiate, I am available. If as long, the moment is below my expectation, I, I, I let you go. I let you go. So then uh, there, was, there, was, uh, there was one question again, why do you want to, why do you want to leave? If someone was talking about, can we be, can we be uh, sincere? Yes, you can be sincere as long as you are not good, you are, you are, you are not painting the company black. You can be sincere. And I, 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 another thing is, well, we must always remember that our our profession requires confidentiality. So there are some things that even even if it is bad, because of that confidentiality reasons, you cannot just get there and start saying, yeah, the company does this, the company does that. If I'm one of the, if I'm in the panel, it's what I also believe is the day you want to leave our own organization as well, that is how you get outside there and start telling people what you have seen in our company, which is only open to insiders. So I will just see it as a red flag that, you know, we can't take this guy. He will still do it for us as well. So just like Dele said, Dele is on point, focus on the successes. Focus on the successes, focus on the successes. Be sincere when you feel that it's not going to hurt any party and you are not displaying any confidential information. Then, uh, I don't think you was asking a question on why he wants to join and he said that because, of, uh, because he wants to have access to big data. For me, it's a part. opinion that is not good enough hello hello can anybody hear me I can hear you. I think he's loading right. Maybe you had to go on. Okay. Let me ask him to unmute. Okay, because I, I thought. Hello? I really, uh, Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, the guy, you know. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay so, so, it then means if you join us and the big data as we said is not there, it then means that you're going to leave us in the game. So, Let's 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 look for something you can do research on that company. There must be something that actually attracts to that company. So let's look for something that is very 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 key. Something that the interviewers will hear and they will they, 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 will, they will they will they will love it so much. So not something that is available everywhere. So uh, that that's all from my side. So uh, I don't know. Just my own personal opinions, and uh, if anybody wants to still ask me the question of why I said I'm available, so uh, then it's back to you. All right, thank you, my brother. All right, I think you've done justice. Um, Emeka, um, so the plan is to actually end this webinar by six, the way it's going, we'll end it by seven, but I, I really like to end it by six. Yeah, so that book can. To go on other activities. Um, uh, Emeka, do you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to give my notes. When when uh, Adedeji finished his session, when we finished the session with Adedeji, I, I wrote something oh, okay. that I could right. talk about briefly right. that we've not touched, and oh. then we could take some more questions before we close. 
All right, no problem. So I make I think I'll allow you to do that, right? I'll go through the questions in the chat box and bring them up, right? Because there's a lot of questions in the chat box you've not attended to. So she can give you a summary for your feedback from the notes you taking note of. Okay. Yes. Oh, obviously, we all know that before the interview comes, the submission of CV, and that's another discussion, how to get a tight CV and all of that. Mm -hmm. However, before going to the interview, you have to prepare. When I say prepare, you have to research the organization. Many times, when the, when the organization advertises for a role, you can get some points of what, what the organization is about. You get some things about their culture. In the language of the advert, you will know if they are an uptight organization or if they are a flexible organization, if they are a playful organization with their choice of words. You could also check their website, check their social media handles, check their Wikipedia pages, check some other job sites. So things like Indeed, LinkedIn, and Co. And if you are if you're a Nigerian, check Naira Land. You will get a lot about culture of the organization and about the organization itself. It is very important you know these things. So that when you are the interview, you are using the language of the organization. Interviewers are excited when you have researched the organization. You are using the language that employees in the organization uh, use. They, it makes them feel that you have reset and you 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 already feel like a part of the organization so it, it helps your confidence more so for interviews there are two kind of interviews basically or generally speaking there's a structured and not structured interview for structured interviews you have questions that have already been set and must be asked so and sometimes you could tell the interviewer is usually going through their notes. This is the question that will come first. This is the question that will come second. This cover. And then they've listed the question and they have marks to those questions. So those, those are structured interview situations. For some other kind of interviews, it's not structured. So they could ask you, introduce yourself. And then from your feedback, they could start asking you some other questions. So you have said that you did this while you are at this company. Tell us a time when you had to do this. Tell us a time when you did that. Tell us a time. So if it's a structured interview, you, you may not have so much to do to direct the interview but if it's an unstructured one you can actually direct the conversation to where you feel comfortable the most right so you are giving your introduction you can give your achievement and say oh you did this and call out things you would want them to dwell on maybe those are your strength areas usually in an unstructured interview they'll say oh from your introduction you said you worked on this account tell us lead it and lead it and lead it so you keep them in your strength zone it helps you so that you're confident and all of that uh i was going to say okay we've talked about body language yeah some body language that speaks confidence some body language that speaks shyness and timidity look out for your body language don't shrink yourself let them know you're confident it also helps when you come prepared the confidence oozes they see it and they know that uh know the culture of the organization and dress the part when i say dress the culture some organizations would want you to wear a jacket and a tie if you're a guy for example so wear it because i've seen an interview assessment paper that they rate people based on dressing i've seen some other ones they do not rate it so if you know the culture of the organization you should know the culture of the organization by the way dress the culture so that you don't shoot yourself in the leg and what i usually tell people usually or most times you cannot overdress most times but you can always underdress so if you go to a place and you wear a jacket and you wear a tie and you get there and you see that oh it's a laid down organization even if you go there with a tie nothing spoiled you understand but if you go there with a the tie you say that the culture is dressed down you can just take out your tie and put it to your bag but if you have gone there without a tie and you see that it's a place that you must wear a tie some organization they won't tell you the color of the tie to wear a red tie and you go there and you're not with it Tie. First of all, you are G3, you probably lose points for that. So go there properly dressed. Know the culture. And if you can't get the dress culture, better you dress to the end. So for a guy, wear your jacket, wear some professional colors. It sends signal that you may not be aware. Top of your head, if somebody, if somebody sees you wear a brown suit, they just assume you're a serious person. So dark colors usually work. Even for ladies, when you're wearing a dress or a skirt or a trousers, wear dark and professional colors. Again, you cannot, in most cases, overdress, but you can always underdress. Uh, okay. I think there's about it. Requirements for the interview. So again, in the job description for the role, we see the requirements. So some experience in financial services, in manufacturing. When you are doing your introduction, call some of those catchphrases. So my name is Chukwemeka. I have over five years experience in accounting in manufacturing sector in Nigeria, because that is what the JD asks for. 
So you want to use the language of the JD, right? Yes, I'm not saying you should be a robot, but touch these things. Some people just look at, oh, tick, he has five years, tick, he has manufacturing experience, tick, he has that, he has that. If you have it and you don't mention it, it's possible the interviewers could miss out on that. So call it out if you sit in the JD. The requirements for the role, call it out that you have it in your experience. I'm an I can train, blah, blah, blah. I have post-graduation five years experience. I've worked in this, I've worked in that, I've worked in that. My achievements, if some of the things in the JDI are your achievements, call them out. Financial reporting, great. I remember something now. So when you're calling your achievements, call the impact of the achievement and not just the achievement. So for example, if you introduce a new reporting tool, it's an achievement, but you phrase it better to create impact to say, I introduced a new reporting tool that drove efficiency by 10%, that saved the organization 50 million naira, that drove top line and bottom line. So people want to see figures to your achievement. Don't say, I made my team come early. While it may be an achievement, see the impact of that achievement. So I made my team come early. I so we're able to turn in our monthly reports by the last day of the month. So I introduced a new reporting skill that drove sales by 5% in the Northwest region and so on and so forth. Organizations want to see things that impact top line and bottom line or things that drive efficiency or effectiveness in the organization. Well, well, well. I, th I think, I think, I think I've covered the things I wrote about it. Yeah, I, th I think that's about it, Dele. Okay, all right. Thanks, Emeka. Um, so I want to start answering questions relating to the comment section. So the first one comes from Hioma Sarah. What if you were sacked or laid off from your former place of work? And you're being asked why you left. Does this act against you uh, in getting the job? You know, if you know you did well with your former company. Now, this is a very sensitive scenario, right? Um, so one is to understand the circumstance around the layoff. It clearly the layoff was not based around performance or time. Maybe, for example, during COVID, companies laid off people. Was not performance driven. It was just a case of oh, they knew they could not handle it. You can mention it now. If, for example, you're laid off, or let's assume you're, you're laid off. If you did doing other things, like so, example, maybe you had to go and write your ICANN exam, or you went to go and do something else, rather than focus on the layoff, just say you took some time off work to focus on your ICANN exams to finalize it to get to the final stage because you want to just ensure that it's closed out. So yes, you've not lied. You just only just omitted the fact that, oh, you're laid off from your place of work, right? So that you could pop out mind. Because reality is that more, more often than not, right, from personal experience, I would say they, will, they can focus on the fact that you left the organization. And based on that, now, like, I don't know, instead of being level playing ground, they want to leverage on the fact they're out of job to maybe, for example, get a lower costs in terms of pricing. So let's say, for example, you are worth 300K. They may want to be offering you 200K for, for whatever reasons. And, oh, so that's my perspective, but I'd like Emeka to give his own perspective from an HR point of view. And let's hear. Daily is a very sensitive one. And again, you are right when you said it depends on the circumstances around the layoff, right? Usually, most um, structured organization would reach to your previous employer to get referral before they conclude with your uh, recruitment or your confirmation process. So it's very important you are as honest as possible. Also, um, your voice is dragging, I think, next talking. So, it is an if you stole us, you cannot tell your new employer that you stole. Can you hear me now? Is it, is it any better? Yes, yeah, they're going better now. Okay, yes. So I was saying that the circumstances around the layoff is very important. And I was also saying that the current employer, should you get the job, would most likely reach out to the previous employer before your recruitment or confirmation is concluded. So it's important to be as honest as possible. Be as honest as possible. If it was an integrity issue, that's a really, 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 really difficult one because you can't tell your current employer that we are part of a team that tried to embezzle funds or defraud the company it's, it's something you cannot say and if they reach out and, they, and your previous employer tell them that it probably would not help 
but you can fill the gap. However, if the circumstances are, like Dele said, uh, the company has to downsize because of financial flow, the COVID situation, for example, you can phrase that so, or, and let them know the situation. So at a difficult time in the company, for example, they had to let go 70% of the employee because production shrunk from this percent to this percent and my department of function was affected. So I'm one of the people that had to go. You can see I'm between jobs right now to realign my perspective or to get more skills and all of that. And why I say it's important to fill the gap, when you are out of job, don't sit down doing nothing. It's really difficult to explain gaps in CVs. So if you're out of your job, take courses, volunteer, so that that gap is not uh, very visible. A job is, is, is a job. It's not because you are paid, but because you are doing work. So if you're out of job and you're volunteering at a place, and even if you're not paid, it closes the gap. So you left this job, or you were doing this, and you got this experience, so call it out. If you left the job to get some more skills, call it out. So I, I, I'm currently now, you can say currently, rather, I'm between jobs, and uh, I took this uh, haters to build on my skills when it comes to financial management, getting my can, and blah, 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 blah. Let them know as truthfully as possible, but uh, paint the situation so that it's understood and it is your is to your advantage. Yes, very important. I don't know if that helps. All right, that's fine. Um, so the next question is from Tokwe Ismail. And Esther, thanks for the feedback, I guess. It was a comment, but I think, I think people have read it. Now, Tokwe Ismail said, what can you say about someone sitting career from banking to accounting, right? Um, my own feedback generally is for roles, they generally transfer role skills. So if one is switching roles and you are interviewing for role into accounting, just demonstrate the fact that one, there are certain transferable skills from banking that you can take into accounting. So for example, there's no way your company will have a bank account and they liaise with, a, with, their, with their bank, right? They potentially that they're trying to even raise the facility. With your banking experience, you'll be able to help drive that process, right? Or even identify potential banks that could, relationship with those banks could foster growth, right? Those are examples. Now, another thing again is that if you are switching roles from banking, you also want to be able to tell your tell employer that, okay, yes, your experience is in banking, but these are the things you've done to prepare you for an accounting role. So what are you doing? For example, you've taken a course like Practical Accounting Academy, right, to give you a practical experience on accounting, which could move to that role. You've taken one or two professional exams to help you prepare yourself for an accounting role. You want to talk about it, yeah? So those are the kind of things you should kind of lay emphasis on if you are interviewing and someone's asking, oh, you're assuming from banking, you don't have any experience in actual industrial accounting. Those are the kind of things you want to lay emphasis on. Okay, Mika, I think there's anything you want to add to that. Yes, <clears throat> you, were, uh, you were right with your response, Dele. Many times people are currently on jobs or roles that is not their first choice because of the peculiar job situation in Nigeria. It's also good to look out. But while you're looking out, prepare to take the opportunities when they come. One of the ways you can is to get education in the field you want to move into. So you're in, you, you can, you're in banking, you want to move to accounting, take professional courses in ICANN, learn some, 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 some hands-on account or hands-on accounting uh, skills and experiences. And you could learn this by volunteering. Volunteering is a very powerful tool to get skills. It could be in small organization. You could be keeping their books. You could be helping somebody that is doing that so that you get this skill. And then the transferable part. Uh, a case in hand, I moved from sales to HR. And then one of the questions that came is, why do you want to move? I was able to explain the transferable skills. When I was in sales, I was a sales manager, right? And I managed a sales team of six people. I trained them, I mentored them, and this helped our sales revenue to grow. This was clearly a transferable skill. So I was telling them, in, my, in, my, in, my, in this role in nature, I'll be able to do a, uh, a, a competency gap analysis, for example. I'll be able to identify training needs for, uh, for members of, of my team and the organization at large and prefer uh, adequate intervention to close gaps that will be identified. These gaps could be training, this could be mentoring that I have done while I was a CEO. So know the link between your current role and the potential role or the new role you want to go into. Get training and get education in those new roles. Like you are prepared to take the opportunities when they come in the future. All right, thanks, Emeka. 
Um, so someone asks, that Samuel asks, I would like to ask if the employer has the sole right to stipulate the working conditions, whereas the employer has no right to make certain conditions to. I, to be honest, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, I don't even do you understand the question? Uh, I, I think I might. Uh, so it's about, aside the salary, there are some other terms of conditions that can be negotiated. One of those is uh, leave days. One of those is working hours or flexibility. One of those is other elements. So you do have cards attached to your role and all of that. And yes, it's not the employer that has the right. Again, an interview or hunting for a job is a two-way street. You let them know what you want. If Right now, after COVID, there's so much talk around flexibility. There are roles that before now were not flexible. You have to sit behind the desk in the office. But every day we get potential employ, employ, employees tell us that, oh, I would want my role to be flexible. I want to work from home. If it can be done, and if that's what you want, put it on the table. The organization, you be surprised the organization may give you. You can tell, ask for a work from home allowance. Organizations are beginning to give that now. Even you are, you are the one asking to work from home, but you're also telling them that they'll give you some allowance to, uh, to, to fund your electricity bill, fuel bill, internet bill. And some organizations are actually doing that. So it's not the organization that has the sole responsibility of determining what the terms and conditions of service are. You let them do what you want. And some of these things are actually flexible. People or many organizations are moving from one size fits all pay structure and terms of condition because the, the, work, the world of work has been disrupted. COVID came to this disruption. Jackpa is coming to this disruption. So the talents are not there anymore. So organizations still great guys. And they can trade off some things to keep those guys. Trust me, organizations would. So ask them for what you want. And you may just be able to get some of all the things, some of all the things you put on the table. Okay. All right. Thanks, Emeka. Um, so there's a question here from Binga Saloko. And he mentioned that, oh, the an interview asked him why did he leave? He said for career growth. First company, second company, the same thing. You're now asking a question that. If we don't meet your expression for good expression, it means you leave us. So how do you answer such a question? <laughs> uh, that's a question that would always come up, especially if, you're, if you have short stint in the organization, like three years, two years, I don't know that. What have helped me? Okay, I've had such stint. Eh? I'm, not, I'm not a hot pasha, by the way. When they ask me, I tell them, I know what my career goals and aspirations are. I know what, what I want to be in five years. I know where I want to be in 10 years. And I think those goals are aligned with what this organization, this organization offers at this time. I'll give my best. And I believe the organization is one that also, uh, what's the word now? That also looks out for the growth and uh, development of their employees. That being said, I intend staying here in the long term. So again, it's two way thing. I'll give you my best. What are my uh, expectations? However, you could be in some uh, organizations that have very lean structure. And when I say very lean structure, very lean structure. In the finance department, for example, you may have five guys report to the CFO, maybe finance controller, financial analyst, tax accountant, tax accountant, and so on and so forth. The next level is finance a CFO. And the CFO is not going anywhere. Nobody can go anywhere. Nobody can fit into the CFO role. You can only get a salary increase and so on and so forth. Do not let any employer keep you from achieving your personal career aspirations. If you are really interested in the CFO role in five, in five year time and the CFO is not moving anywhere, prepare yourself, get all the skills, get all the education and look to be CFO somewhere else. But let the organization know that you are going to give their best and you believe that this organization is one that also is interested in the growth and development of these people. You let them know. So you can rephrase it. So when they say, oh, we see that you don't give your own, you, you won't say you also know an answer. You tell them you know what you're for the organization fits clearly Sean is interested in the career group of his organization with that you okay, can cut in in and out i don't know if everybody can hear you clearly but yeah. they're in and out oh i'm so, mm -hmm. so sorry about this network today all right no problem okay so someone asked a question on how do you explain that oh you've gotten through a training but you've not practicalized what you've learned from a training, like an accounting year training without actually carrying it out. So, um, so the way the training is structured is so that we teach a lot of things that are very practical in nature. 
what was also, they also exercises during the training, right? You should also try to play around those things. So during an interview, the way you can answer those questions is yeah, talk about the training, what you've learned, and also what you've done with them, right? So you can practice with them. Some of the times you can get data online to play around some of this stuff. The good thing that the trainers exercises, so you can practice with them. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you've not done it, you've not done it. Yeah, in actual practice sense. So just may ever like, oh, you've learned this, and this is what you could do with it. And with an opportunity in a role like this, you'll be to apply what you've learned from a very practical standpoint into that role. Yeah. That's where I think you could answer that question. Okay, so don't ask a question, right? and we've not addressed that part. What kind of question can be asked after the interview? Now, I would say my the maker would contribute. Now, answering questions, asking questions, obviously, you should have researched the business, right? So you try as long as possible to ask questions that are relevant to the role. So, for example, what kind of maybe start from is not what are the kind of things that the kind of challenges the business is facing, and what are they doing to overcome those challenges, right? Based on current trend. So, for example, in Nigeria, FX. FX is a major problem for a lot of companies that are either into importation. So, are they managing it, right? Um, power. So, what are the sources of how they are managing power? Power is a major problem, right? So, you ask questions around that, but you need to ensure that the question you're asking pertains to the business itself. So, for example, the company is present in the north. You're asking them how they resolving their security issues and how our employees, how do you ensure that employees are safe and they don't have issues? That's a question you possibly have. But the key thing there is to actually research the business and ensure you're asking questions that pertain to the kind of challenges that the business will most likely be facing. So key in the whole thing is ensure you research the business. Yeah. Is this why to turn down a potential offer because the employer wants a physical interview at least for the first level interview? So it depends. I, I don't think there's anything wrong in having a physical interview first time, right? Obviously, it may not be convenient for you, right? And then the, the critical thing for you is that can you find a way to do the interview physically? If you can, why not? Secondly, is the company the company that you are interested in working for? Right. So, for example, maybe you're only just interviewing or to just gain experience. Like all that general people I mentioned, sometimes you don't wait till you need a job for interview. It's a job that you're interested in. You know, sometimes some of us have eyes on companies. So, for example, some say, oh, I, my dream is to work in MTN. If MTN is requesting for a physical interview, right, and I know that's a job I'm interested in, I would most likely go for it, right? So, the key thing for me is that, is it a job I'm interested in? Right. If it's a job I'm interested in, I'll most likely go for a for an interview physically. But a job that I'm not sure if I want it or not, it's just here or there. And there's nothing wrong in turning it down if there are other opportunities. But if that's the only opportunity you have currently, maybe you've been looking for interviews and that's the first time you even get an interview and they're calling for physical, I think that you should make a sacrifice to make yourself available for that interview. Yeah? Um, share for me. I hope I answered your question. Okay, so someone asked the question, the guy's instance where your work was um, criticized and how you manage, handled it. So now if your work was um, criticized, he is knowing what were the issues they identified with that work. You take note of those issues, work on them, so that subsequently those issues are not raised pertaining to that your job or tax you've done. So that way, someone can see that you're actually learning from your past mistakes and those issues are not coming into bearing anymore. Right, that way, that's way to handle it. Identify what the problem is, learn from it, take note of them, and ensure that future or tax assigned don't have the same issues going forward. And that's how you manage it. Yeah. So if I want to describe, I'll, I'll actually mention an instance, but I don't just mention an instance when my work was criticized. I also just mentioned, oh, my work was cut this way, and I took note of A, B, and C about it, and I worked on them and ensured that that did not happen again. I really haven't got a feedback from my superior or my line manager saying that the quality of the output of that tax is now top notch that requires little or no supervision or no error in such a tax anymore. That's where I answer such a question.
five years time. Let's see. Yes. Let me come. Let me come. Okay. All right, Emeka, I thought you were off, right? I'll just allow you to answer the question. Hi, Emeka. Okay. I changed my talk, so and I was muted. Oh, okay, all right, no problem. I think there's a question that says... Oh, the critique part? Yeah, critique part can answer that. Yeah. If I were the one, I'll rephrase the question. I'll take the critic as a feedback, and it's okay to get feedback for every role. So I would rather say, oh, at different points in my career, I've gotten feedback on my job outputs or projects I've worked on. While some are great feedback, some are also, uh, I got a few that are developmental feedback. Try not to call them negative feedback and tell them how you close those gaps. So while I got this feedback from my manager, uh, I got... Uh, trained it could be a mentoring program he put me through the reports and then what happened after was so since then uh my output in that regard has grown from this to this level uh as a matter of fact i've been i'm so good in that regard that i'm also mentoring other people that have those developmental needs in those uh areas right so feedback is okay everybody gets feedback so don't call it a critique call it feedback tell them how you've been able to overcome and be better at the job and then how you have also helps other people grow in that aspect that was before now uh, a feedback that was for development. So next question, Omola Akoni asks, how does the position fit in with the career path you envision for yourself? Now, so the way I'll answer it is, now the reality is every role, one way or the other, right, has maybe somewhere else that you need to report to or high on grade. So I'll give an example. Now imagine if I was in like pay, a payable accountant, for example, right? At some time, right, if I learn the onuses around what that tax entails, right, tomorrow, if I'm a finance manager, I'll most likely provide oversight over someone with that role. So you want to have a good understanding about what the payable role entails and how you need to build skill sets to ensure that you have to provide oversight over that function in two years from now or three years from now, right? Because if you're able to do it, you get hands dirty, right? And you're able to pay put proper attention and identify potential growth areas from being able to do that role. At times, not all the roles you'll be able to finally be involved in, like hands-on, but sometimes some roles are important in actually growing your career. So something you want to have done, like reporting, for example, it's good to have actually been involved in reporting, like preparing your management account or financial statements, because those rules are kind of very sensitive. So you, you know that if you're able to build skills and competence around that, when you become a finance manager, you'll be able to leverage an overpriced oversight function over someone who performing a similar tax or responsibility. And that rule is actually very important, right? Because it's every business would have that function or rule. Right? I, mean, I don't know if you want to contribute. To that. Yeah, there are always ways to link a role you're interviewing for to your career aspiration, unless it has absolutely nothing to do with it, and in which case you shouldn't be interviewing for the role, as a matter of fact. But even if it's in finance and it's not your end goal for your finance career aspirations, there should be a link. So if you are doing financial analysis but you want to end up as a finance controller, there should be a part that has to do with uh, maybe understanding the input or the budget for the role and helps you do your reporting when it comes to whether you are right on plan or away from budget and all of that. Find the linking, uh, the linking areas and use that as a platform to explain that you need this experience to help you become a, an all-round finance controller, for example. Or if you go, I, I, in the long term, I intend to be a CFO. So this role I'm interviewing for will give me that perspective to be able to understand financial analysis, analysis for example understand tax, for example, because the CFO role in the future, we have an oversight function for this, that, 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 this. Just find what links uh, the current role or the role you're applying for to what your future aspirations are. Again, you have to prepare, you have to plan, and you have to do research, both for the role and for the organization. All right. All right. Thanks, Erika. Um, so I think, unfortunately, I, I think the question doesn't want to end, right? <laughs> right? But I think we, we should have a hard stop by 6.30. But I think I'll take Olufunke or Ladili's question as the last question, right? And we just get general feedback around the session from a few people. Please, how do 
do someone answer the question apart from what's on your resume tell us about yourself um so i think basically i don't know what what do you do outside your like your professional stuff right so for me if i'm going to answer that question i either talk about things i'm volunteering in right or i can talk about fitness stuff i do like in the gym or things i do for fun right how i tend to relax and how that kind of helps me become a better person um so some organizations they want to see the fact that you have like a work life balance or they want to see that oh this person would yeah i don't know the right word to use but like this person will bring some level of work life balance and that's bringing out things outside of your cv could provide that you have a life outside work right and they want someone that will be to drive maybe a leadership role along that responsibility and uh, make i don't know if you have any context this on that yeah yeah then again, right, you, you have captured it. So people want to say that you are not just a work, work, work person. Depending on the role, they want to say that you have a life outside of work. If it's a leadership role, they want to, sometimes they want to understand that you will not push your people to come in Saturday and Sunday and every day of the week. So they want to say you are, they want to see if you are leaving that first. So again, depending on the role, you know how to phrase the answer. So you can say, oh, leadership role, you can say, oh, when you are not working, you are doing this with your family, you are volunteering in, uh, here or there, or you are golfing and all of that, or you like to go on vacation, they know that you are not a taskmaster master and will push your people. If it's a more junior role, why you will have life outside of work, you can call out the skills, those extracurricular activities are giving you. So, for example, uh, what's the word now? Let's say you watch TV series. I do that. So, uh, I could say I, I like watching TV series. My popular genre is law and crime. It helps me build my analytical thinking and blah, 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 which also helps me on my, you know, that kind of thing. Just uh, link it. You're building an analytical skill for watching law, law and order on TV, or you like surfing the net, or you like reading some journal when you're not chilling so that you get into the mind of employers or blah, blah, blah. And this has helped my job grow. For junior role, definitely senior role, you can say you do that, you do that, you, do that. you also understand that you have uh, life work, but work life balance. They call it work life integration now. And then you're not going to push your people every day, every day, every day to come to work. All right. Um, I think that, that should be all. I know we did not answer everybody's question, and apologies, I could not answer everybody's questions. Right. Um, so I think thanks. It's been almost two hours, 30 minutes of our time. And I think we started with almost, at some point, we did not think we hit 100, but it, we, at some point, we had 100 people participating. In this webinar, All right? I don't know if anybody has any vote of thanks or final how they feel about this whole webinar. And who's LinkedIn? Is it accounting at LinkedIn handle or which LinkedIn? Oh, Emeka, okay. We'll, we'll get Emeka's LinkedIn handle for you. But if you go to the post on LinkedIn, my accounting yard, you will see, you will see, um, yeah, his profile but it was tagged in the post around the webinar. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any vote of thanks to give before we wrap up the webinar. And like we say, thanks everyone, everybody for joining. Um, being on the webinar helped us a lot because obviously from different perspectives, from questions answered, I'm sure a lot of people have learned a lot from this webinar. Yeah. Um, but it's been nice to get vote of thanks or anything that's what feedback around the webinar from every other person. All right, so is there anybody? Does Comfort want to say something? Okay, TLC, let me unmute TLC. TLC, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Your voice is faint, though. Sorry? Your voice is faint, but you can talk. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better now, very better now. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, firstly, I just want to thank thank um, the accounting yard and all the organizers for bringing up this webinar. In fact, it's actually a high hope now for me because one of my takeaways is to always celebrate your little win. No achievement is um, little. And then um, no matter where you get to in life, always live a life of integrity and also being an accountant's confidentiality is also sacrosanct 
Mm-hmm. So those are my things. Those are the those those are the things I can actually take away from this webinar. And also, I want to thank Mr. Koko Ola Ola name, or even right with that name. Mm-hmm. He actually speak. Uh, he answer. He actually answer most of my questions. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, in fact, he dealt with everything mm-hmm. thoroughly. And uh, Mr. Emeka also dealt with everything too. Um, mentioning the fact that I always be confident because one of my major weakness also is to, <laughs> is how to face panelists. And most especially, there was a time I entered one interview like that when I saw like four different people. In fact, I could not even sit down. I was just shaking. Mm-hmm. How do I go about it? So he actually gave me an insight about how to be confident about myself. Right, currently, right now, I'm actually working in an um, finance department with a um, with a subsidiary group, mm-hmm. and also I think so far so good. Being an app campaign, I've been able to um, get myself acquainted. Like Mr. Pupola also mentioned the fact that even if you don't want that particular job, apply for it. And when you are called for an interview, so it also give you an experience. But uh, yes, thank you, Ola Dino. Thank you very much. It also give you an experience on that. And so far so good. I've been building my confidence. In fact, I've attended, though, despite the fact I don't want that job, but I've attended like two, three different webinar interview. I mean, online interview, and it has actually um, opened my mind, opened my eyes to some certain things. Coupled with the fact of the one you did today, too, in fact, it actually, in fact, I, I actually learned another thing. I learned in the new thing, the new ways of answering some questions, and my confidence also. It also build up my confidence. I want to appreciate everybody on this call. I want to appreciate you very much. Thank you, accounting. Yeah. In fact, I've actually paid for the next course, the one that is coming next month, and uh, because I needed to learn some things. Because I've been a chartered accountant. You know, being a chartered accountant, sometimes a, a mantle is on you. A lot of things is on you. You are expected to deliver even beyond your expectations. So I needed to build my confidence level and also build my reporting skills because I think that's one of those things I'm actually lacking. My reporting skills is totally low on how to interpret financials. It's totally low. So in fact, that is the major reason I had to apply for the next court. I want to appreciate everybody, Mr. Emika and them. Um, and I actually don't know your name. Um, 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 I'm so sorry. I couldn't mention your name. The one... Uh, I don't know your name, but okay. I just want to appreciate. Uh, don't worry. Book, sorry? No, yeah, it's fine. My name is Oladili. That's all. Okay, Mr. Oladili. Thank you. Thank you so much. God will continue to bless you. All your endeavors, God will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Ifoma? Hi, Ifoma. Hello, Ifoma. Hello, Ifoma. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, good evening. So sorry, I raised up my hand initially um, yeah, to no say a vote of thanks, but then Toyo C has done that. So uh, I think true. I think the what he said actually covers up for everything I wanted to say. So thank you so much, accounting. Uh, welcome. All right, no problem. Thanks. So I think um let's see comfort Esther. I know you said it lost, right? You've contributed both in questions in the chat box, right? Comfort. Okay, I guess comfort left a hand. Let me just allow Esther to talk. And I think, yeah. Hi, Esther. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ladili. Although I'm not looking for help, but the way I'm working presently, I'd like to stay in my prayer. But I want to say, I, do, I, I used to be a part of this group before I traveled this experience ago. I returned back to the country because I, will, I don't want to be amongst those. The country has nothing for those who are professionals. So I gave back to my quota. I want to say thanks for, you know, I think I got this uh, impact. I missed uh, the group. So I would like to say thanks for the work that So I uh, do a lot to learn, a lot to give out to the group. So I am so happy to know that the group, the group is still existing. Now. Many accountants know to do so, to a high to their internal achievement. So, thank you a lot for this. Uh, and I hope that you know, this one will be of good. So we are bringing our value, bringing our own um, contributions to us, which have been based on good notes. 
There's some feedback coming from your your Hello? end. What you're saying. I think I had what's like what you're trying to say. 